Hello and welcome to this new video. This video is a compilation of around 13 videos of comprehensive Excel classes. This video contains all what you need to master pivot tables. If you are one of the followers to our channel, you recognize that this is exactly the PT series that we produced in our channel, but all in one video. Three hours full course about Excel pivot tables. It will cover 12 topics and more than 20 practical examples. As this video is a compilation of all videos of the PT series, Excel analysis using pivot tables. So this is the topics that was covered on those videos. The first video, PT01, was covering the pivot table basics, discussing the creation, design, and the layout of the pivot table. The second video, or PT02, was discussing the refresh and update of new data. Videos PT03, including point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3, all discussing the grouping of dates, numeric values, or text fields inside the pivot table. Video PT04, or the fourth topic, is discussing the calculated field and items inside the pivot table, or inserting formulas inside pivot tables. Video PT05 is showing an example of how you can use report filter pages option inside pivot table and produce multiple reports use, using one pivot table. Video PT06.1 or the sixth topic is how you can use the generate get pivot data formula and a related topic how you can use show value as to produce something like running totals the seventh video or seventh topic, seven features you need to understand to master pivot tables. PT08 discussing present and visualize. It is discussing the pivot charts, slices, and timeline. And you can see how you can use these three tools in order to create an interactive dashboard. Video PT09 is how you can build pivot table based on Power Query. And a very good example of how you can use Power Query with pivot tables to handle more than 3 million records. And the last video, PT10, is how you can use pivot table with power pivot, how you can create relations between tables, an introduction to data model and DAX formulas also is covered in this video. And before you go straight to the first topic or first video, I want to tell you something about how you can navigate through this video because it's pretty long, it's three hours. So you need something that can help you to move between the different topics. So in the description section below the video, you can hit the show more button. When you do this, it will open the full description and you can see I put the titles for each section or each video and on the left to this title you will see a timestamp. If you just click on the timestamp, it will take you directly to the section itself and below the title of each section you will see a link that you can use it to download the practice file and also if you didn't subscribe yet to the channel please do like the video if you like it and leave me a comment hope you will enjoy it and thank you very much for your time welcome to video pt01 this is my first video talking about pivot table in this video particularly, we are going to talk about create, design, and layout of the pivot tables. So even before working on the pivot table, you need to make sure that you have the proper data set. And this is what exactly we are going to discuss. And then how we create the pivot table, how we can give it a name, how we can use the field list window to design our report. And finally, we are going to talk about the report layout and design. And let's go directly to Excel and see how we can do this together. Before creation of a pivot table, we must have a proper data set. And to understand what is proper data set, let's go to the left hand side and look at our data prepared for this purpose. So the first condition must be met is headers in the first row. And this is exactly what we have here. We have six columns and we have the headers of these columns at the first row. So you can also call it column name or field name or the headers. And you can see here we have six of them, six names or six headers or six field names. And starting the second row, our records or our data starts. And the record or the row is one data point for each field. And you can see here the first data point is date. So this is uh, 1st of January 18. This is for date and then key accounts for channel. Canal for region, handlebar for the product name, 
three for quantity and 182.7 for sales so this is this condition is also met starting the second row we have one data point for each field also to have a proper data set each column should contain the same data type or consistent data type meaning that date column should contain only dates channel region and product should contain only text quantity and sales should contain only numeric value and then um, you should not have any blank rows or totals or subtotals and why that because if we create a pivot table with totals or subtotals this will result in a duplication in your data and if you want to test do any test on your data you can do it on the side here so you can type equal sub open bracket and then you just select some rows here and you can test but you cannot do it inside the column itself because if you create pivot table this will result in a duplication and also you should not have any blank rows and if you want to test this in this data you can uh, press on control and down arrow and you can see the data is continuous till the line 5931 and I put the total uh, down here and I left one blank row before the totals so my data set is starting from here up to the headers is continuous no subtotals and no blank rows and also for you to have an easy um, data set to select you should have a blank cell from each side of your data set so the co uh, row one is empty a uh, column a is empty column h in is empty and if you go down again you can see uh, row 5932 is empty as well and if you want to test that this it's very easy if you select any cell inside your data range and you press ctrl a it will select exactly the range that you want to uh, use for your pivot table you're having your proper data set now you want to create the pivot table and there is two ways to create the pivot table first one is just select any cell inside your proper data set and from insert ribbon on the left hand side click on pivot table and the create pivot table window will pop up directly i will cancel this because i want to show you the, sh the keyboard shortcut also select any cell inside the range or inside your proper data set and press in on alt and v the same window will pop up again create pivot table to complete the action you have to select the range and because you are in a proper data set the excel will, se will sense the range automatically and you can see here the range from sheet jan 2018 sales and here is the name of your sheet and starting from b2 up to g5931 this is exactly the range just confirming your range and then the second question where you want to create your pivot table the default is a new worksheet but for our case we want to put it in, in an existing worksheet so i press on existing worksheet and then i want to specify the location i will put the cursor inside this location i will scroll down 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 and go here in l um, 35 you can see here the location and then i will press on ok the pivot table will be created automatically you can see here on the left hand side or the right hand side you can see the pivot table and the pivot table field list and now you have the pivot table created and first thing to do is to give a meaningful name to your report and you can see here the default is pivot table one giving name to the pivot table can be done through two ways first one is just to right click on the pivot table and you select pivot table option and you can give name from here pivot table name I will cancel this or you just go again you have to select any cell inside the report and go to analyze ribbon it will be active only if you select any cell inside the pivot table you can see the analyze ribbon and from the left hand side you can find the pivot table name window and you can just give a name like sales and press on enter we have the report created and we give a name a meaningful name to the report and now we want to build the report or start to design the report so to design the report we are going to use the pivot table fields or the fields list so in the upper section of this window you will find a list of all the header name the six header names date channel region and so on and so forth and then in the downside you will see the four sections of the report the filters columns rows 
and values and let's start with the rows and let's see what will happen if we drag any field inside the rows i will select the channel i will click and hold i will drag it down and release and look at the report what will happen it will generate a unique list of values of these fields so this is exactly what will happen whenever you drop any um, uh, value or any field inside the rows it will generate a unique list okay now try to also put the region below the channel so i will also uh, click and hold i will drag it down i will release it will generate again another unique list of seven values of the region and you can see it's a multi-level and again it's a unique value or unique list of values and if you tell me that there's a duplication alex and alex i'll tell you no because this is alex for door to door and this is alex for key accounts so it's still a unique list of values now i want to take out the uh, region from the report so i can just select and, and click and hold and take it out of this window and release it will disappear and the report will go back view of only channels now i want to take that channel here and drag it into the columns what will happen it will do the same in the column field it will generate a unique list but in the horizontal direction and the four values uh, the four unique values for the channel field will be the headers of your report uh, now i want to take out the channel as well because i want to look at the value so i'll take this out and let's try to drag to drag and drop something in the value section i will start with the sales which is a uh, data of a type numeric so i will take it to the values once i drop it here it will generate an aggregation so anything you drop in the values it will generate an aggregation and because it's a numeric value it will generate uh, a summation as a default but also i can change this i can just right click on this and choose the value field settings and i have a lot of options to choose i can choose the count the average the max the min but let me choose the count if i choose the count the header will change to count of sales and this is the number of transaction 5929 which is exactly the number of rows of my uh, data set now if i want to combine what i did in the values and what i did before in the rows and columns i can take something like the channel and drop it in the rows the field channel i'll drop it in the rows and look what will happen here is the count the total count five nine two nine and this is broken down by the unique list of values and this is how many times the door-to-door -door appeared in my original data set 1520 and so on and so forth for the rest of the values i can take also the sales i take another instant of the sales i'll drop it in the values here and because it's numeric it will uh, generate a summation aggregation and here is the total sales for two to door door to door total sales for key accounts and so on and so forth if i drop below here something like region it will generate another breakdown so there is, here is the subtotal and here is the breakdown of um, the door-to-door -door by region and if you go down down you'll see the grand total shown here very easy to create an aggregation and create a report using pivot tables so last part in the four sections of the report uh, design window is the filters so let's take the region from the rows and drop it in the filter what will happen here a top level filter above the pivot table so you will have the filter above here if you open this drop down list you'll see all the regions here you can select any one so if i selected the first one let's say alex you can see the report filtered so all the information here is only belong to alex i can do multiple selections i have to check this box first and then i can do multiple selections you can see here region is multiple items and here is the data for these three regions together if i select all now i remove the filters and again it back to the all last topic in this video let's talk a little bit about report layout and design so to start doing this let me take the region down here in the rows and we'll back to this form the uh, the multi-level uh, report door to door subtotal and then the breakdown by region and so on and so forth until you find the ground the grand total below here so what you are looking at here is a um, 
a report layout called compact form this is the default when you create a, a pivot table report you can, you can change this from the design ribbon and design will appear only when you select any cell inside the pivot table so from design ribbon you will find here the layout section and you can start change the, the report layout from here so this is the default show in compact form if you select uh, show in outline form you can see that the only difference that the um, row labels in two columns door to door here and the breakdown is here and once you select this you can do some other changes so you can insert blank rows and again from the layout section from the design ribbon you can go to blank rows and put and select uh, insert blank rows and this will do a separator between each subtotal and also you can repeat the labels if you have it in the outline uh, form so you can go again to report layout and you select repeat all labels and you can see here the labels from the first uh, f from the first layer is repeated um, all the report down till the end so there's another uh, report layout which is uh, it's very popular which is called um, tabular form so again from the design ribbon you can go to report layout and you can select show in a tabular form it's very similar to outline however the subtotals you will be find down here down of the uh, section so it's not above the section it's down the section um, and the last thing that you can work on with the uh, design is the subtotals so you can select the subtotals and you can select do not show any subtotals so the subtotal disappeared here or you can select show um, uh, show subtotals uh, at the bottom like what we have here or you select it show all subtotals at the top but it will not work with this layout you have to go back to the outline and you'll find it here and you can toggle between two these two in this form the outline you can select at the bottom or you can select at the top or you can just remove from everywhere so now let's take out the count of sales I will leave only the uh, sum of sales and from the design ribbon again I will go back to the compact form and now I want you to look at the cross tabular form so if you just take the region from the, um, the rows and you drag it and drop in the columns now you will have the channel in the rows and the columns uh, you have the regions if you look at the report shape now you can find a unique list of channels on the rows a unique list of regions on the on the columns and you can see here the values in the intersection and all the sum aggregation in the intersection and you'll have automatically two grand totals one on the right hand, right hand side and one at the bottom of the report and now also you can work on the grand totals because sometimes you don't want to show all the grand totals again it's very easy from the design ribbon from layout grand totals you can just uh, elect not to show any grand totals or you can select to show it only on the rows or only on the columns or whatever you want for me i would go for grand total in both directions so i will go to grand totals and we'll select on for rows and columns now you have a good report you have the channels in the rows and you have the region in the columns and you have grand totals in both direction the last thing that we want to do is to just give a number formatting you just select any cell inside the pivot table right click select number formatting because this is a sales value so i will select currency and zero decimal places okay the entire report will have the proper number formatting before we le before i leave you i want to have a look on the pivot table styles you have a plenty of ready-made styles you have the light you have the medium and you have the dark let me change to something that in the light section i will take the light gray you have some options to add you have the banded rows you can select from here or the banded columns you can select from here or you can have your own style if you go down here you can see new pivot table style i did a small uh, my own pivot table style i put the red in the headers and the white in the header labels a lot of topics discussed in this video pt01 including what is proper data sets creating pivot tables pivot table name and how we design the report using the 
pivot table field list window and some discussions around layout and design please stay tuned for the next video pt02 if you like what you heard please like share and subscribe to the channel thank you very much and see you in the next video and bye welcome to video pt02 our second video in the series PT for pivot tables. In this video, we are going to see how we can do refresh, update, and change of data source in pivot tables. Five topics will be discussed. First one, how we can change values inside the data set. Second, how we can copy and change the design of the pivot table. Third, we'll look at how we can add column or change the column header for the original data set of the pivot table. And fourth, how we can add new data using names instead of ranges and finally how we can use tables functionality or excel tables with pivot tables in this excel sheet we have the january sales extracted from triple a bike shop and we have we want to create a pivot table based on this data set we select any cell inside the data range and we use the shortcut alt and v the same window will open again but this time it selected the range because we are selecting one cell inside the range so it's automatically selected the range and it will leave us to determine exactly where we, where we want to locate it and i will select existing worksheet and i will put the cursor inside location and i will select uh, i6 and press on ok the pivot table will create it and we have on the right hand side the field list i want to give a meaningful name to this pivot table i will call it gen sales pt and enter from the field list i will take the date in the filter area and we'll put the channel in the rows and i will put the sales value in the values it will create a breakdown or summarization of the grand total of the sales categorized or summarized by the channel now i want to give a quick number format select any cell right click format numbers i'll go directly to currency zero decimal places and click on ok and now what we want to do the first thing that we want to discuss if we change after creating the pivot table if we change any value inside our data set what will happen so i have this cell that uh, colored by yellow I will add 1 million to this cell so I will type select and type plus 1 million and press enter and now you have the value increased by 1 million look at your pivot table nothing happened no change why because we have to refresh whenever you change any value inside the data set you have to refresh your pivot table in order to get the effect inside your summary how we can do this refresh we have three ways to refresh we can select any cell inside the pivot table you go to analyze ribbon and you have the refresh button here or you can just right click inside any cell inside the pivot table and select refresh or you can just use the keyboard alt f5 and notice what will happen to the grand total it will increase by 1 million i'll press now alt f5 you can see now your data increased by 1 million the summary increased to 4.5 million instead of 3.5 million you can reverse this by do, just doing undo i will press on ctrl z to undo the first un undo will undo the refresh that we just made so this will go back to 3.5 Control Z, yes, now it's 3.5. Another Control Z to reverse the action that we did, the addition of 1 million. Control Z, it's now back to the original value. Second topic that we want to discuss is how we can copy the pivot table and change the design of the pivot table. In this report, we have a breakdown of the sales by channel, and suppose that we want to do another report but summarized by region. So I can just select the entire uh, report and press ctrl c to copy i'll go down to i35 uh, ctrl v to paste and now i have two identical versions of my report i have also a new uh, field list for the new report i can just uncheck the channel and check the region 
and now I have the new breakdown by region so I have two identical reports uh, or two uh, similar reports one by the categorized by region and one categorized the first one categorized by channel and now the, th the third action what if I want to add a new column to my data set and include it in my pivot table so let's try this I will go up to my data set I will add another column let's say I want to report the sales after discount and assume that I want to take 10% discount on all of the sales value so I will give a new header name which is this counted sales and I will uh, I will multiply every value times uh, 0 0.9 to take the 10% discount I will double click here to copy uh, all the way down let's go now to the new pivot table down here and see what will happen actually nothing happened I don't have the new field here because it is in column G and my data is only my data range is only up to column F so I want to change my data source let's check from here from analyze ribbon I have in the data section I have the icon change data source click on this it will open the change pivot table data source window you can find here the original data up to F it's from B to F if I want to include G as well I can carefully select the F backspace and type G and click on OK and if I check now my pivot table you can see the discounted sales in the pivot table field list appears down here I can just check it will be now selected in your pivot table right click number format currency zero and click on OK now you have the discounted sales included but what if I feel like this header is too long I want to cut it a little bit short so I'll go up again and instead of writing the full discounted sales the full word of discounted I will type only the first four letters so it will be disk underscore and sales and I'll press enter let's see what will happen here nothing happened uh, still I have the same name the same original name discounted sales so I want to refresh I will use the uh, keyboard alt f5 oops what happened the column disappeared if I check again I have the new column here discounted sales because it is in the new data range in the range uh, up to G however because the name header changed it this disappeared from my selection but the new name appeared here so I have to reselect it again so I will check the discounted sales and you can see you lost also the number formatting so I have to redo the number formatting I will choose currency and zero decimal places now in this pivot table I have the data uh, only for January sales if you check the dates from here you will see that you have only January suppose that you want to include also February and you have the data for February in this sheet February 2018 so let's take another copy from this report I'll just copy select enter uh, report and copy I'll go down here to Jan and Feb report and paste and now I want to include February as well so the first step I need to take the February information uh, below the Jan information so I have to go to this sheet and select from B3 just after the headers because I have the headers already included I will select B3 the top uh, left cell I will press on shift and control and right arrow to select the entire row you hold shift and control and press on down arrow to select all the way down control C to copy I'll go to January I will go to the left uh, the most left column column B I will uh, press on control and uh, down arrow to select the first empty cell control V to paste so you have now January uh, and uh, under January you have February information but you have also to copy uh, to update the uh, calculated field all the way down so I'll double click it will copy down up to the end of the report if you go up to your pivot table you can see your data is not updated even if you refresh it will not be updated because uh, the range now e uh, extended below the original uh, range selected for the pivot table so I can just uh, go again to analyze and do change data source and reselect the range down to include January as well but before doing this I can do something different this time I can just select any cell inside the data range and press on control A to select the entire range and go to the name box here and just select 
uh, and delete what whatever written here and I will give it a name I will give it name like Feb underscore Jan just to include to indicate this is Feb and Jan together and press enter now you have named range called Feb underscore Jan if you just uh, select the down arrow in the name box here you will see the only option that we have Jan Feb and Jan if you select it it will select the entire range again I will select the Feb Jan from here from the name box and control C to copy and I will go down to my pivot table now I will go to analyze change data source and instead of reselect the range I can just paste control V to paste and uh, select OK and now your data range automatically updated to include February as well if you check from the filter here you have Jan and if you scroll down you will have Feb as well and you can see the numbers already updated here the last section in this video is how to work with tables so I have the same data range here the January sales but this time I will uh, convert this data range into a table to do this using the keyboard I will select any cell inside the data range and I will press on Control and T this small window will open create table it will just confirm the range and ask you if the first uh, row is containing the headers which is uh, the case now I will press on OK it will open the design ribbon and now I can give a meaningful name to my table I'll call it all sales and press on enter and now from the same ribbon design ribbon you have a new option here called summarize with pivot table so we need to go to insert or use even the shortcut I can just press on this uh, option and it will open the create pivot table window it, you can you can see that it's already selected the all sales range and I can uh, choose my location existing worksheet and I will put it let's say in I8 and press on OK now you have the pivot table created let me give a name for this pivot table as well I'll call it all sales PT for pivot table and enter let's do similar pivot table date in the um, filter um, region in the rows sales in the values right click number format currency and zero decimal places to do to put some number formatting now let's try to add do the same action to add the discounted sales I will select the first empty column which is column G I will type the header discount disk underscore sales enter see what happened now the range expanded automatically the table expanded automatically and even if you want to calculate the new formula which is the sales times 0.9 when you press enter and you did the formula in the first row in your table the formula will copy down automatically till end and you can see because you are working in a table and now if you select your pivot table you don't you don't need to change your data source you can just right click and refresh and you can see the new field appeared here you just select and you put your number formatting and you have your report now ready and updated which is very good actually and even if you want to update February to include um, in your report you have now if you check here you can see only we have January data you can go to February information it's already selected control C to copy we go back to uh, January table and you go down to the first empty cell control V to paste and look what will happen if we, when you press control V again the range or the table uh, area is expanded automatically and also the formula copied and included in your uh, data range as well and if you go up to your report now only one refresh alt F5 and you can see data updated if you check your filter for dates you can see you have Jan and then you have February everything sorted out so we did all the action that we did in the past four um, steps but it's it is much easier using tables uh, working with pivot table is so easy to analyze your data but even with tables is much much easier a lot of topics that we discussed we discussed how we change value inside the data set how we copy and change the pivot table design 
what will happen when we add new columns or change the column headers how we can add new data using name and ranges and finally how this works with the tables instead of ranges or names thank you very much for your time please stay tuned for the next video pt03 and bye Welcome to the third video of Excel Data Analysis Series PT for Pivot Table. Video PT03 talking about grouping, particularly PT03.1 is discussing grouping of dates. In this video, we are going to see how we can report sales weekly, monthly, and quarterly using the grouping option in Pivot Tables. If you want to follow along while, the, while viewing the video, you can go below in the description section and you will find the link you can use it to download the excel workbook this excel sheet uh, i can find the daily sales for 2018 extracted from uh, aaa bike shop records we have five fields or five columns in this data set date channel region quantity and sales what i want to do is just to report monthly and quarterly sales i'll do this using the pivot table so i'm going to select any cell inside the data set i'll use the keyboard shortcut alt n v uh, then the window for creation of pivot table will be opened and you can see the range automatically selected i want just to decide where to put the new pivot table the default is new worksheet but i'm going to select the current worksheet existing worksheet and the location i'll put it in i7 and then i'll click on ok the pivot table will be created first step is to add uh, or give a meaningful name so from analyze ribbon i'm going to the most left section and i'll give a name like sales monthly and press on ok on enter and now i want to create my report or build my report i start with putting the sales in the values and because it's a numeric field as you can see here it's going to summarize uh, the total it will give the aggregation function of summation it will sum all uh, the entire uh, column uh, and i want to give some number format so i'm going to right click on the value uh, select number format and currency because it's amounts zero decimal places and okay now because i want to report monthly so i'm going to select the dates and i'll put it in the rows and because it's dates and in the rows section uh, the pivot table will create a unique list of all the dates so i have here a list of 365 days for the year starting january 1st up to december 31st but now i want to report monthly not, not daily so the grouping now will come to the picture so i can do grouping from many places i can just right click and select group or i can go to the analyze ribbon and select group field from the group section once i click on group field it will open a grouping window and ask you exactly what you want to group the default is month so i'm going to just click on ok and see what will happen the 365 rows will be summarized into only 12 rows and i have my monthly report here what if i want to also uh, add two levels so i have one level for month and another level for the daily sales so i can go again to the same option group fields and i can select days with the month and click on ok and it will create two levels or a hierarchy of the dates one for the month and one for the days and you can see in the pivot table field a new uh, field created called month and what if you want to um, to collapse this um, uh, subtotal meaning that i want to look at january without the details of january i'll find here a small minus i can just click on it it will collapse january i can do same for feb and 12 uh, times to collapse the entire field or i can go to the active field section in the analyze ribbon and select this red minus it will collapse the entire field i can use the green plus uh, uh, up here to expand the entire field let me collapse and also if i want to just get rid of the days i can just uncheck the date here and it will appear only with the month uh, breakdown now i want to add the quarter view as well so i go to, again to the same option group fields when i uh, selected you can see here uh, days and months selected i can also add quarters click on ok you can see here another field created called quarters uh, if i want to look at only month and quarters i can just uncheck the days and you can see here 
the four quarters and um, the breakdown by month is also appearing here so now you are final with the monthly and quarterly report now i want to report uh, the same information but this time weekly not uh, monthly or quarterly so what i'm going to do is just i want to select the entire pivot table i will copy it and go here in o7 and Control v to paste and i will have another copy or another version of the same pivot table i'm going to go to the pivot table analyze and i want to ungroup i can just select from the group section the ungroup option or i can just right click and do ungroup look what will happen when, when I, I select the ungroup oh the two reports ungrouped although i'm just working on this one the other one also ungrouped so i have a workaround to overcome this issue so i'm going to undo the first one uh, the ungroup and also i will undo the uh, copy of the uh, of the report so instead of pasting um, uh, the copy uh, inside the same workbook i'm going to go to a new workbook let's say book one and control v to paste it and i'll do the ungrouping inside the new workbook so i'm going to analyze ribbon and group and then i'll go to ungroup and now the ungroup already done here i can just select uh, this pivot table this time Control x to cut it i'll go back to o7 inside uh, our active workbook and i'm going to press Control v to paste and i can see here the two reports now independent this one is grouped and this one is ungrouped now i'm going again to the pivot table analyze and i'm going to uh, group field and this time instead of selecting month i'm going to select only days and i will unselect month and once i did this you can see here this small box is activated or it was dimmed if you select month and days it's dimmed uncheck on the month it's now active and it will ask you how many days you want to group together to do a weekly report you can just type seven here and click on ok and in this case you can see you have from 1st of january till 7th of january and you have the 52 weeks of the day of the year and now using the grouping you manage to uh, report monthly quarterly and weekly although in the original data set you don't have anything about month or quarter or week so this is everything for this video um, i hope that was uh, useful for you and please stay tuned for the next video pt03.2 thank you very much for time and bye welcome to a new video from excel data analysis series pt for pivot tables video pt 3.2 we're still discussing grouping in this video we are going to see how we can group numeric values we are going to look at two exercises first one how we can report products by sales brackets or sales levels the second exercise will see how we can evaluate the performance of the sales men during the video also we are going to touch point on two important features in the pivot tables first one is show value as and the second one is conditional formatting with pivot tables if you want to follow along while you are watching the video you can go down below the video in the description section you will find the link you can use it to download the excel sheet in the first example we have the annual sales report extracted from triple a bike shop report it contains the categories and the product names the quantity and the sales for each product and we want to understand exactly what of those products or categories lies in which sales bracket so we we'll start by creating a pivot table i'll use the keyboard shortcut alt and v it will open the create pivot table uh, dialog box uh, it already understand the range I, I want to decide where to put my pivot table i will select the existing worksheet and location will be h six and i will click on ok the pivot table will be created i want to give a name let's call it sales brackets and enter now i'll start to build the report before working on the rows or columns area i want to build the values area first and i'll start by taking the quantity in the values area it will create a total for the quantity column i want to give it some number formatting right click number format I'll use numbers 
thousand separator and zero decimal places and okay i want also to report the sales i'll put it down here in the value section after the sales it will create another total for the sales but now i want also to, to create or to report the percentage of the sales and of the quantity how can i do that i'll take the quantity once more i put it between the quantity and sales it will create another sum or another aggregation for the quantity column so i will right click and go to show value as and i will select as a percentage of column total i will select i'll do the same for the sales another version or another copy of the sales i'll put it here and right click show value as percentage of total column i can also change the headers here and i will select the header here and i will go to the formula bar and i can give a name from the formula bar like percentage of quantity and enter i'll go here also in the uh, sum of sales 2 i will give it another name like percentage of sales or s for sales and enter now because i want to report on the sales brackets so i have to take copy of the sales field and put it in the rows section and once i do that it will create a unique list of all the values in the sales column but this way it will not give me any insights so i want to group it and i can do it from two places i can go to pivot table analyze in the group section and select group field or i can just right click and select group once i did that it will open a dialog box called grouping and as you can see it is giving you suggestion automatic suggestion to start with the lowest value and end with the highest value and categorize every 100,000 but I want to customize this I will do the zero as a starting point and I will end up with the 300,000 only and I will keep the 100 for each category and I'll click on OK as you can see once I click on OK it will create four categories first one from 0 to 100 second from 200 to 300 and the third over 300 and you can see there is a lot of insights in this report you can see here the quantity of the first category representing 91 percent of the total quantity sold however the value is only 33 percent and the last category which is above 300,000, you can see seven percent of the quantity representing 60 percent of the sales and i think this is very insightful not only this you can also take the category names and put it below the sales and you can decide which category exactly is representing uh, which percentage of your sales in terms of quantity or value as you can see here the bikes representing like uh, 1.8 million dollar 60 percent of the sales however it's representing only seven percent of the quantity if you want to look at the products as well you can just uncheck the category and check on the products and it will give you the analysis but the analysis this time will be a little bit big so if you want something to guide you through something visual so you can just select any cell in the column percentage of sales and you go to the home ribbon from home ribbon you select conditional formatting and data bars blue data bars and you can see it will create a different color here for only one cell however you'll find a small box here if you check or click on this arrow on the right hand side you can also select all cells showing percentage of values and once you did that and if you enlarge the width of the column a little bit you can see a small bars on the small percentages and big bars on the high percentage and this will guide you through the report so the second example that we have is how to evaluate our 69 sales representative according to this criteria which is saying that poor performers are doing from 0 to 35,000 and the exceptions above 105 and two other categories in between so the, to build our pivot table I will select any cell inside the range I'll use the keyboard alt and v to open the dialog box for creation of a pivot table I will select the existing location of f10 I will click on ok and I will give name like sales performance enter I will start with the sales in the value section I will take another copy of the sales I will drop it in the rows and I will do the grouping this time and you can see I want to change this uh, automatic grouping coming from the Excel I want to start with zero to match this criteria and I want to have uh, a category every 35 so I'll write here 35,000 and I want to end at 105 
this is the highest category according to the criteria and I'll click on OK and you can see here you have exactly uh, simulated the criteria I have here in my pivot table not only this I can also borrow the names so I can just from the formula bar copy the first name I'll go to the row label here and just control V to paste and enter and I'll do the same for the rest of the table as you can see now we managed to simulate exactly the four uh, categories that we have in the criteria for evaluating the sales rep final step is to take the column sales rep and drop it below the sales so we can know exactly which sales rep lies in which category so we have the four categories now if you uh, collapse uh, or expand poor you can see the names in this section if you expand exceptional you can see the names in this section and so on and so forth that's all for today hope that was useful for you uh, please stay tuned for the next video pt03.3 we'll talk about grouping of text thanks for your time and see you next video and bye Welcome to a new video from Excel Data Analysis Series PT for Pivot Tables, video PT03.3. We are continuing talking about grouping, particularly grouping of text fields. In this video, we are going to see how we can group similar items to summarize our report, how we can create new data categories inside the pivot table itself, and thus we are going to uh, get rid of the traditional helper column technique which increase the size of the data massively and thus increase the size of the file itself and reduce the performance of Excel. Below this video in the description section you will find the link you can use it to download the Excel file so you can practice after watching or you can even download now and follow while watching. Also Please use the button below the video to subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when new videos are uploaded. In our example today, we have the daily sales extracted from AAA Bike Shop records. It comes in four columns, the date, the channel, region and sales. The requirement was to summarize the data that we have in the original data set to create a monthly sales report and report on the channels and regions but not in the original categories as you can see here we have seven regions and we have four channels but the report required is to summarize the regions into only two categories greater cairo and rest of egypt and also to summarize channels in only two categories direct and indirect channels there are two ways to perform this action first one is to use the helper column like the file that I'm going to show you now. In this Excel sheet, we have the original data in the blue, in the four blue columns, and then we created another four helper columns that we used to categorize our data. So we created a column for the month, year, Cairo, and other direct and indirect to categorize the data as required. And we used some Excel functions or formulas like text to get the name of the month, and again, text to get the number of the year and other two VLOOKUPs to get the data from this uh, lookup tables and categorized by direct indirect Cairo and rest of Egypt and then we created a pivot table to summarize the data by month direct indirect Cairo and rest of Egypt the problem with this method is that we had to double the size of the data so we have originally four columns we had to create another four columns meaning that we doubled the size of the data and as you can see here we have more than 10,000 rows in this data set and imagine that if we have like 600 or more rows this will get the size of the file massive and the performance of Excel will be really slow so the second way of doing this report is to use the grouping feature of the pivot tables I'm going to create a new pivot table from the original data uh, set so I'm going to select any cell inside the range I'm going to use the keyboard alt and V to open the create pivot table dialog box it will recognize the range automatically and I'm going to select where, where I want to place this pivot table I'm going to use uh, this worksheet and H12 and I'm going to press on OK it will create the pivot table let me go to analyze ribbon on the left hand side to give it a name like sales 
report and enter now the pivot table created let me start to build the rows and columns of this table before doing this i want to start to do the grouping so the first thing i want to report on is the month so i'm going to take the date field and drop it in the rows section it will create a unique list of all the dates the 365 days of the year i'm going to select any day of them i'm going to analyze ribbon again to group field i'm going to select i'm going to group for days and month and okay i will uncheck the date and you can see the 12 month already created here and i'm going to take the sales and drop it in the into the value section it will create a breakdown or a monthly breakdown of this annual daily sales i'm going to select any cell and right click number format and this is amounts i will use currency zero decimal places and okay now i finished the grouping of the uh, month i want to start to work on the grouping of the region and instead of having uh, seven regions i want only two categories of regions cairo uh, or great cairo and rest of egypt i'm going to uncheck month i'll take the region down in the rows it will create a unique list of the seven um, uh, regions i'm going to select cairo and giza and i'm going to right click or I can go again to analyze ribbon but this time you can see this option is dimmed I'm going to group selection up here and select it will directly create a new group called group one and it has inside this group Cairo and Giza and if you look at the pivot table field you can see a new category or a new field created called region two I want to uh, rename this because it's uh, I want to give it a meaningful name so I'm going to select group one and if you look at the active field here it will uh, indicate that you have region two typed here up so i can change it just select and give it a name like uh, cairo and other and enter and now you can also rename the group one you can call this one great cairo and enter now i'm going to select alex canal delta sinai upper all together right click and group it will create group two with all the five regions i can also change the name i will select it from the formula bar up here and i'm going to give a name like rest of egypt and enter now we are done with the grouping of the region i'm going to uncheck region uncheck cairo and other and i'm going now to work on the channel categorization we have four channels and i want to categorize them by direct or indirect i'm going to select the channel i'm going to drop it in the rows area as well it will create the unique list of the four uh, channels i'm going to select door to door and retail together right click group and let me call this group uh, direct and enter i'm going to select wholesale and dealers right click group and it will create group two, group two let me call it in direct and also i want to change the new category which is channel two i want to select it and change it from the uh, analyze ribbon active field section i'm going to give it a name like direct underscore indirect and enter now i finished with all the categorization i can just rearrange my report i will uncheck the channel i will take the uh, cairo and other and put it in the column i'm going to take the month and put it down here in the rows above the direct indirect and now you have your report finished that was all for today thank you very much for your time i hope that was helpful for you please stay tuned to the next video pt04 which will discuss the formulas inside the pivot table please go down and subscribe to the channel so you can get notified with all new videos thank you very much and bye welcome to a new video from excel data analysis series pt for pivot tables 
video PT04 calculated fields and items in this video we are going to see how we can add a calculation or formulas inside the pivot table itself and this video divided into two sections first section is talking about calculated fields and the second one will discuss the calculated items if you want to download the Excel sheet so you can practice after watching the video or even if you want to follow while watching you can go down in the description you will find the link please use it to download the Excel sheet if you didn't watch the six episodes of the PT for pivot table series please make sure to visit the playlist and watch all of them this will help you to follow this video and the videos to come so in the, our practical example today we are going to start to talk about calculated fields and as you can see we have extraction from triple a bike shop this is the daily sales it is coming in 69,000 rows and seven columns the field that we have or the columns that we have is the date product name category quantity price the discount percentage sales and discount value and the first requirement is to calculate the net sales and this is basically the subtraction between the sales and the discount value so we can reach the net sales but we want to do this inside the pivot table itself not in the original data set and to build the uh, pivot table i will select any cell inside the data range and i'll use the keyboard shortcut alt and v it will open the creation of the pivot table dialog box it will sense automatically the range i can go to existing worksheet i'm going to select l7 and i'm going to press or click on ok it will create the pivot table the first step is to give a meaningful name as we uh, mentioned many times before pivot table analyze on the left hand side pivot table name i will select and give a name like net sales and enter it will give the name and before building anything in the columns or in the rows i'm going to start to calculate the new field of the net sales so selecting any cell inside the pivot table pivot table analyze in the calculation section fields items and sets select calculated fields it will open this dialog box the first thing that i want to do is to give a name so the name will be net sales tab it will take you to the formula section and you can notice here there is a list of all the fields that i have in my original data set i can uh, select anything from this list i want to start with calculating the net sales it will start with the sales so i'm going to select the sales by the mouse i have the insert button here or i can just double click once i double click it will come up here in the formula bar and then i'm going to use a space and then minus and then space and discount value and okay once i did this you can see here a calculated field created with the net sales now i can start to build my report i can put some columns and some rows so i will start with the category i'll put it down here in the rows i can take the dates and put it over the category it will give me the days i can i can group this i can go to pivot table analyze group fields i can group by month okay even if you take category over the date you can have here the monthly sales for each category the formula is working very good and this is the beauty of the calculated fields you can pivot your uh, calculation you can use it in all the dimensions even if i take out the categories put it in the columns you can have a very nice port with all your months all your categories and the subtotals are working perfectly and the grand totals working perfectly in the second example now after calculating the net sales in this pivot table i want to calculate the commission and the commission it will be a simple calculation we need to multiply the net sales by a fixed percentage which is three percent so i'm going to create another pivot table i'll go back to the original data set i'll select any cell alt and v it will open the dialog box i'm going to select existing worksheet i'm going to use this time t7 and click on ok pivot table created let's give it name like a commission and enter and now i'm going to 
build my new calculation however if you notice here you will find the net sales also in the new pivot table we didn't copy it we just created a new one however because it's built on that same data set so the excel automatically added the new calculated field in the new created pivot table so now i'm going to build another calculation based based on the net sales pivot table analyze fields items and sets i'm going to select calculated fields i'm going to give it another name this time this will be commission tap to go to the formula section i'm going to select net sales it appears now here net sales and asterisk to multiply i'm going to multiply by three and percent and okay it will create the calculation now you have the sales commission right click number format you can use currency because this is amounts zero decimal places and okay you can build another report similar to this one so you have now the commission also calculated now let's try to do something different i'm going to copy this report this pivot table i'll select the entire pivot table Control c to copy and i'll come here Control v to paste let me take out the dates i'll take the category only here and let's try something different and suppose that we don't have the total sales we already have the total sales here which is the multiplication of the quantity and price suppose that we don't have this column and we want to calculate the sales itself inside the pivot table so i'm going back to my new or my copy of the pivot table and let's start to do this i'll take out even the commission and i'll go to pivot table analyze fields items and sets calculated field this time let's call it total sales tap i need the price double click asterisk to multiply quantity double click and add and okay look at this this is a very very big number so what happened why this is not working and i know why you know why because the aggregation the sum aggregation is superseding or it starts before the multiplication that i add in the formula formula meaning that the pivot table start to do the submission of the fields and then it it's performing the uh, multiplication and if you want to prove this you can go to the original data set go down to the quantity column at end of the quantity column use the shortcut alt equal it will create a sum function enter do the same for the price and then try to multiply these two cells together and let's see the outcome this times this and enter and look at this this is exactly what happened in the pivot table this is the same amount that we saw in the newly created pivot table and actually i don't know any other way to reverse this order so the the correct calculation is to first multiply and then do the summation but in this case it will sum first and then do the multiplication and i'm not aware of any way that you can change this order and that's why this will not work with you multiply two fields to calculate something like the sales it will not work inside the pivot table and let's try the last one i will copy this table again i'll go here and this time i'll try the um, divide multiplication is not working when i multiply two fields i'll try to do to divide two fields and let's try to calculate the average price after discount so let's take out the total sales it's not correct and let's try to add another calculated fields from pivot table analyze fields item and sets calculated fields and this one i'll call it average price tap i need the net sales which is after discount and divide and i'll select the quantity and okay now it's added and look at this it seems like working perfectly and let's try to do something to make sure that it's working perfectly 
let's take the net sales I'll put it here I'll take also the quantity I'll put it in between and let's try to perform the calculation ourselves so I'll take the net sales equals net sales over the sum of quantity let's try to uh, do some number formatting yes it's working perfectly and even for the grand total it is working perfectly and you know why because we said that for the calculated fields the pivot table will sum first and then do the calculation inserted in your calculated field and in this case it will do the submission and then it will divide and this will work perfectly with the averages but it will not work at all if you try to multiply to two fields to get something like the total sales in the second part of this video we are going to look at the calculated items and we have a similar data set but it's a little bit different if we look at the filter here we have the sales the sales report for two years 17 and 18 and we have categories products sales quantity and sales value and what we want to do now is to calculate the variance between 2018 and 2017 and this will be the absolute variance so let's start building our pivot table any cell inside the range alt and v to open the dialog box we'll select the existing worksheet let's take h7 and okay meaningful name let's call this the variance and enter and let's build the report i'll take the years to the columns i'll take the categories and the rows i'll put only the sales value and you can see here the report built right click number format this is amount currency zero decimal places okay this grand total i don't need because i'm going to put instead here the variance between the two years so i'm going to design ribbon grand total show for columns only and then let's try to build the new calculated items so i'm going to select 2017 or 18 no difference calculated items it will open a similar dialog box this one this time called insert calculated item in year so this is particularly for year because i selected 2017 and as you can see here this is the field list and by default it selects the year field and you can see the items inside this field also on the right hand side we'll start with giving a name as usual i'll call it variance var tap to go to the formula box i'm going to take 2018 double click minus 2017 double click and add and okay you can notice the period the pivot table you have the variance here and similar if you put some other things like if you put the product name here it will work perfectly the calculation is correct however because we enforced the calculation across all the table it will assume that there is uh, some uh, caps inside the accessories which is not the case caps will be only on the uh, clothes and the brakes will be only in the components however it perform the calculation across all the possible combinations so you have to take out these zeros and this is very easy from the filter on the rows label you go down here select the product name from the drop down this is the product name and from the value filter does not equal zero and okay it will take out all the zeros and you will find the report very good now we calculated the variance let's try to calculate some other things i'll take out the products suppose that you want to do a summation for all these categories calculated items i'm going to give a name like total category tap this time i'm going to use the function sum like excel the normal excel open parentheses accessories double click comma bikes double click comma clothing double click comma components close parentheses and okay a new category or a new item created called total category but notice this the grand total is doubled because here is the sum of all the categories and here is the sum of everything including the total so i have to take out 
the grand total so from design grand totals off for rows and columns and now this is, is this is working very good even if i take the product name like what i did before it will work very good let's undo this i will be only staying with the category 2017 18 and the variance let's do some complications and let's try to divide i'll divide the variance over the base year 2017 to calculate the year over year i'll do this here in this uh, in a new pivot table let's select the entire pivot table Control c to copy i'll go to p7 and Control v and let's go again to the pivot table analyze fields items and sets and let's select first 2018 for an example and let's do a calculated items it will open the same dialog box it's a insert calculated items in year but this time i'll call it year over year percent and i want to select the variance that we already cal calculated insert and i will do it over the 2017 which is the base year to calculate the year over year change and okay and as you can see here it will create another year over year column don't worry just we need to change the uh, number formatting so from home i will choose from the number section percent and one decimal places and look at this it seems like working perfectly even for the total category and one of the benefits of doing this total category is if we add back the grand total from design grand total and go to on for columns only it will create this duplicate but look at the formula the formula here is the submission of all the uh, percentages and this is not correct at all because you have to first um, do the summation and then to divide you cannot divide and then do the submission so this is working perfectly for the division if you are going to calculate the year over year change as we tried in this example however in some cases you need to reverse the order of this calculation and that's why we created our own total because working with our own total with this will help us to change the order and i'll let you see now in a minute but before doing this look at our calculating fields look at here in the variance and look at the formula bar up here you can see here is your formula but if you look in the grand total you can't see anything it's just a number because this is the standard calculation coming from the pivot table but this is what you calculate yourself look at the year over year this is the variance over 2017 look at the category total category and you can see here the exact formula that we wrote together and look at here this is the uh, the intersection between the two formulas it's working with the year over year this the, co the, the formula coming from year over year is prevailing here but what if you want to enforce that uh, the reverse order meaning that you start with the division and then you do the submission this is easy you can do it here this is an option to do it for calculated items if you go to the pivot table analyze and go again to fields items and sets and you select solve orders it will give you a list of all the calculated items calculations and it will allow you to use the move up and move uh, move down to change the order for this case let's take this formula total category and take it down uh, the variance calculation and close and you can see here it's now changed and look even inside the formula bar again you will find the sum formula coming here and this is exactly the sum of these four percentages 8.5 which is wrong for this case so i'm going to change it back fields items and sets solve order and i'll take it up one step so the first thing will, will happen here the variance 18 minus 17 then it will sum the total category 
and then it will calculate the year over year and this is working perfectly for this case and in order to have this report correct I need to take out the grand total I'll go to design grand total off for rows and columns that's all for today hope that was useful for you if you didn't subscribe yet please use the button below and the bell icon to get notified with the future videos thank you very much for your time and see you in next video and bye welcome to a new video from excel data analysis series pt for pivot tables pt05 in this video we are going to see a fantastic feature in pivot tables called report filter pages which allows you to generate multiple reports from the same pivot table and in this video also we are going to work on a comprehensive practical example of creating a complete refreshable accounts receivable system using formulas and pivot tables and also we are going to look at how pivot tables can build the customer statement report and how we can generate 75 statements using this fantastic feature report filter pages and finally with one click we are going to refresh and update when new data comes to our system if you want to follow while watching this video or even if you want to practice after watching please go below in the description section you will find the link please use it to download the excel file and if you didn't subscribe yet to my channel please use the subscription button and the bell icon to get notified with the new videos also don't forget to visit the channel and uh, look at the pt series from the beginning we have seven videos before this one in our practical example today we are going to generate a customer statement for 75 customers and before doing this we are going to create an ar subledger and we have here the template for this subledger and also we have here uh, the customer information for the 75 customers in this sheet so we have uh, customer codes from 1 to 75 then the customer names and some other information about the customers and also we have four document types we have invoice credit note and check or cash and again we'll go back to the ar subledger and look at the eight columns of this subledgers the first four columns are prepared to use it uh, for manual data entry uh, for the documents or the transactions and we use some data validation to make sure that we properly um, uh, enter the, our data so the first column it contains date it will not allow you to enter anything except date so try to enter something like one it will not allow you however if you try today's date it will allow you to do so and also document type you can only select from the drop down one of the four document documents type i'm going to select invoice and then customer number i'm only allowed to select from the drop down one uh, of the customer numbers from 1 to 75 let's select 3 and also i'm allowed to enter absolute amounts only so i'm going to select 5000 or enter 5000 and in the right hand side you can see a document number generated the customer name retrieved from the customer list and the amount decided to be positive and the nature of the transaction will be debit because it is an invoice and we are recording in the ar ledger in order to proceed further in our project i want to enter more information more transaction in this table in this template uh, however instead of doing this i have already some information recorded in the documents uh, sheet here uh, but before copying uh, some information from here i'm going to convert this template to a table so i'm going to select any cell inside this data range and i'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control t to convert it to table the dialog box create table will pop up and it's already selected the range and it will ask you if your table has headers and it is and i'm going to click on ok now this range converted to table i'm going to select from the table design ribbon i'm going to select uh, something like uh, light white here and also i'm going to uncheck the banded rows and i'm going to give it name like ar underscore subledger and enter now my template is ready i'm going to 
erase the test that I did manually I will select and delete and now I'm going to go to documents I'm going to select May information it's like thousand transactions I'm going to select any cell inside the range control A to select all control C to copy I'm going to go back to AR subledger I'm going to select first row of the table and instead of just control V to copy I'm going to use paste special and values why because I want to retain all the data validations that I have in the first row I'm going to select paste values and you can see automatically the table expanded to include all the information uh, copied from the documents uh, sheet and also because I'm working on a table you can see all the formulas uh, copied automatically now I'm ready to generate my customer statement so I'm going to start with creating a pivot table from this subledger so I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut while selecting any cell inside the table alt and V it will uh, open the create pivot table dialog box it's already recognized that I'm working on AR subledger table and it will ask you if you want to use new sheet or existing worksheet I'm going to use existing worksheet I'm going to customer statement which I already created for this purpose and I'm going to select B2 and OK the pivot table will be created I'm going to borrow the name from here double click control C I'm going to pivot table analyze on the left hand side pivot table name select control V to paste and enter and now I'm going to build the columns and rows of the report I'm going to start with the customer number in the filters and the amount in the values and I'm going to select right click number format I'm going to use currency because this is amounts and OK second I want to decide if this amount is debit or credit so I'm going to debit credit I will uh, put it in the columns usually I start with the debit so I'm going to rearrange I want to select credit and drag to the right and release so I have, st I have the report now starts with the debit and then credit so now I want to start with the date in the rows document type after dates and then document number now the report is ready however the layout need to be adjusted little bit to give the, the look and feel of the customer statement so I'm going to select any cell inside the pivot table I'm going to design ribbon and from report layout I'm going to select show in tabular form and now look here you have something like subtotal for the dates I'm going to just select any cell inside the column date right click and uncheck the subtotal same for total cash or the document type I'm going to select any cell right click uncheck the subtotal also the order of the documents is not very good so usually I want to start with the invoices for each date so I'm going to select the invoice and drag it to the top so now I start with the invoice then cash check credit note also create note should be come after invoice so I'm going to select and drag up I think now my report is ready this report is a customer statement but for all customers together now uh, using this pivot table I can also generate an instant uh, customer statement for every uh, one of the 75 customers using the drop down in this filter so I'm ca I can use instead of all I can use customer number one it will generate a quick quickly a statement for customer number one I have the date the document type uh, document number and the debit and credits and I have the balance at the end however this is not what we want to do I'm going to select back all we want to use a great feature in the pivot tables so I'm going to select any cell inside the pivot table I'm going to pivot table analyze on the left hand side I can look here at the option uh, pivot table options I'm going to select the arrow and I'm going to you to use the show report filter pages button and click once I click it will open this dialog box 
asking you which filter you want to use I have only one field in my filter which is customer number and please watch what will happen once I click on OK it will generate 75 reports each of them representing one of my 75 customers and here you go you have customer number one customer number two customer number three a separate statement for each of them so there is some other uh, cosmetics that I want to do for these reports to make sure that it is uh, complete and nice so I'm going to select all sheets right click and select all sheets I'm going to also press control and deselect the first three sheets I'm going to double click at the top of the column A so I can adjust the column width also I want to present the customer name so I'm going to use VLOOKUP here in C1 equal VL for VLOOKUP so the VLOOKUP value will be B1 comma I'm going to uh, customer list and documents I'm going to select my database for customers so uh, comma this is the table or array column index will be 2 and I'm going to select false because I need the exact match close the brackets and enter this action will be done in the 75 sheets because I selected the uh, entire 75 sheets while doing this action I'm, I'm going also to borrow the uh, number formatting or the cell formatting from the pivot table so I'm going to select B1 I'm, I'm going to use the brush and I'm going to select C1 and again it is performed on the 75 sheets I can select any of the other sheets and go back again you can see I have the customer name here go to 2 you have also the customer name and so on and so forth till the end of the report so the question now what if I got new information what will happen to these 75 reports should I go to the 75 reports and adjust them all the answer is basically no and let's see how I'm going I'm going back to sheet uh, documents and as I told you I already prepared some information for June it's another thousand transactions I'm going to select uh, any cell in the range control A to select all control C to copy I'm going back to our AR I'm going to select the first empty row at the end of our table I'm going to home ribbon paste and paste values it will copy the, the thousand uh, transaction and you can see the formulas and everything copied down till the end and now I can go to my first statement you can see I have only uh, May information right click and refresh and look at this now June information included not only in the first sheet also in the second in the third and till end of the 75 customer statements so with one click you can update and refresh your table and with one click you can generate the 75 customer statements I hope that was useful for you if you didn't subscribe to my channel yet please go down use the button for subscription and the bell icon so you can get notified with the new videos thank you very much for your time and see you in next videos and goodbye welcome to a new video from excel data analysis series pt for pivot tables video pt 06.1 generate get pivot data formula in this video we are going to look at how we can calculate formula outside the pivot table but referencing some cells inside the pivot table itself this is a complement to video pt04 when we spoke about calculated fields and items in this video also we are going to look at how we activate the get pivot table formula and then how we can copy or drag this formula and finally what will be the impact on our calculation outside the pivot table when we change the pivot table layout if you want to follow along while watching or even if you want to practice after watching the video 
please go below the video in the description section you will find the link please use it to download the excel sheet and use the subscribe button and also the bell icon so you can get notified with new videos in our practical example today we have the sales the daily sales extracted from triple a bike shop and it comes in seven columns first one is date product name category quantity sales discount and finally the net sales and based on this information i created a small pivot table summarizing the net sales and quantity by category i have only four categories as shown in this small pivot table and i want to calculate the average price for each category outside of the pivot table in order to, to perform this simple calculation i'll just go to the first uh, cell in my new table and just i'll type equal I will select the first cell in the sum of net sales um, column and then I will write uh, the divide operator and then I will select the first cell in the sum of quantity column in the pivot table then I will uh, press on enter this will simply calculate the average price for the bikes if I select the cell and use this uh, plus and drag it down just to copy it will calculate the entire table and this is very simple and very easy and I have no issue but the issue will come if I try to change the layout of this pivot table meaning that I have in the rows the categories only if I want to put below the category something like the product name so let me try this I'll take the product name and I'll drag it down the categories here in the rows section in the pivot table the pivot table will work uh, perfectly however my summary here for the average price will not work uh, good at all if you look at the components which should be here here is the components the 165 over the 38 but if you look here it is not the case it's taking the cargo bike and this is a product name not a category and so on and so forth until the end of the table so let's see how we can overcome this issue let's undo what we did in the pivot table and also i will delete all the formulas calculated here and I also go to unhide this because I already prepared uh, another two columns one for the quantity and one for the sales and this is just to illustrate how um, the solution will work and before doing anything I'm going to select any cell inside the pivot table I'm going to pivot table analyze and from the option the pivot table option section I want to press on this small arrow and I will click on this option generate get pivot table and this is a wonderful option can help us to overcome the issue that we faced while trying to calculate outside the pivot table so I will activate and then instead of doing the calculation directly I will just reference the quantity of the four categories from inside the pivot table to outside the pivot table so I'm going to uh, this cell the P5 and I'm going to type equal and then I'm going to select K5 to reference the bikes quantity and look what will happen in the formula bar it will generate a formula called get pivot table and as you can see there is some parameters inside this formula once I click on OK it will reference the number exactly from the pivot table but the issue now if I try to copy down you will see that it will take the same number so to understand what happened let's have a look on the formula bar and see what happened inside this formula so if I select the, this formula it will give me this assistant that I can use to understand the parameters so first one is data field which is exactly the sum of quantity which is the header of the pivot table that I referenced already then pivot table it it's just reference inside the pivot table and the default it just takes the top left cell from the pivot table the next parameter is field and item field one and item one and because i'm using the uh, category field it is uh, generated automatically here and it is uh, inside double quotation so it is hard coded inside the formula so the field one for this case is category and then item one is bikes so whenever i copy down because this is hard coded it will not change and if i want to change this i need to change the hard coded item name 
to a reference that I can use to change the name of the item. So simply while selecting the bikes and the double quotes outside the bikes, I'm going to select O5. And just in case if I'm going to copy it to the right, I will use the dollar sign so I can um, make sure that the reference of O will not change. And then I will press on enter and still it's working and if i copy down here you will see it will change it will take the components why because the reference change to components the last uh, parameter change to 06 instead of 05 while copying down if i continue to copy down until clothing it's working perfectly and now let's try to change the layout of the pivot table i'm going to take for example the product name i'll put it down here and look what will happen it's working perfectly no problem the 22 is for the bikes and the 38 for the components and so on and so forth and now let's try to copy down to the grand total and look what will happen it will give you an error so if you want to understand why we have error here simply because I'm trying to reference grand total as an item for category and this is not the case inside the category field we don't have item called grand total and because i'm trying to reference the grand total of the sum of quantity so no need to mention any um, category or any field and item here and look here if you look at this uh, field one item one field two item two it's all um, written between two square brackets and this means this is optional in this case i don't need it just select and backspace to delete and enter and now your grand total is okay and you don't have any error and this is the 139 let's try to copyright so i'm going to select and drag to the right the number will not change and this is expected and why go again to the formula bar you can see that still looking at the sum of quantity not at the sum of the sales so i want to change this and this is very easy just i can type it myself and instead of sum of quantity it should be sum of net sales but being sure that the spelling is correct and now it's referencing uh, correctly the net sales select and copy down it will work perfectly uh, except for the grand total just delete the third argument backspace and enter now it's okay i can now simply calculate the average price equals net sales over quantity enter and double click to drag to drag down now even if you try to change in the layout like taking out the product name still your calculation is working perfectly try to put the date down here it's again you have the monthly sales but your table and your formula is working perfectly that's all for today i hope that was helpful for you and useful and please stay tuned for PT06.2. I'm going to talk about show value as, which is a very good feature that also can complement what we are talking about, which is calculation inside or outside the pivot table. Thank you very much and bye. Welcome to a new video from Excel Data Analysis Series PT for Pivot Tables. Video PT06.2 show value as a great feature inside the pivot tables that can allow you to add automatic calculation inside the pivot tables. In this video, we are going to look at the running totals. Also, we're going to look at show value as percentage of the totals and parents and also how we can show value as percentage from different things. And finally, how we can show value as a rank. If you didn't subscribe to the channel yet, please use the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified with the new videos. And if you want to follow along while watching this video, please go down below the video. In the description section, you will find the link. Please use it to download the video. In this Excel workbook, we have the daily sales for AAA bike shop. It's for year 2018 and it comes in five columns, date, product name, category, quantity and net sales. And we already prepared some pivot tables 
in these sheets so we can start working directly and first one we are going to discuss is the running total so I'm going to worksheet running total I already prepared here a small pivot table summarizing the net sales monthly so I have the 12 month and also I have the net sales for the 12 month now I want to show in a new column the running total for the net sales that's very easy first thing i'm going to do is just to take another copy of the net sales and drop it in the values it will create a new column just a quick number formatting right click and number format now i have two identical columns showing the monthly sales if i want to add the or change this to running total just i'm going to right click on any cell inside this column going to show value as down to running total in once i click it will open a small dialog box asking you calculation running total based on which field for this small pivot table i have only one field which is the month so i have only one option here which is the month once i click ok you can see here this column changed to running total you can test something like marsh if you select from uh, Jan, Feb and March, you can see down here the total is 1,047,000 and this is exactly what you have here in this column representing March running total. I can quickly uh, select the header and change the label. Let me put something like running total and enter. Not only this, if I want to show this as a percentage, it's again very easy. I can get, get another copy from the net sales, drop it again in the values. This time I'm going to right click, show value as, but instead of running total, I'm going to use percentage running total and click on OK. Again, the same dialog box. I have only month as an option. OK, I can easily select the header and give meaningful name I'm going to write percent running total and enter so we have now the year to date or the running total for each month January up to December suppose that you want to work only on the qu quarter four which is from October to December so that's also available in this feature so you can just filter so I'm going to open the filter drop down I'm going to unselect all, scroll down, I'm going to select December, November and October only and you can see the formula adjusted here so you have the running total, the grand total and the running total only for this period meaning that this can work year to date or period to date based on the filter that you are going to use and the same for the percentage. So the second one that we are going to discuss from the show value as feature is showing value as percentage of and I already prepared a quick pivot table just to start work with it is a summary again for the net sales but this time monthly summary and also I have the category in the columns so I have the four categories in the columns and the grand total in both sides columns and rows in order to see the new feature I'm going to select the entire pivot table control C to copy coming here in H3 and control V to paste and now I have two identical pivot tables so this time I'm going to select any cell inside the value area in the pivot table and right click going to show value as but this time I'm going to select show value as percentage of grand total and look at this now I have the 100% in the grand total, grand total, which is the intersection between the two grand totals. And I have in the bottom of the columns 77.98 for the bikes, components representing 3.89 and so on and so forth. And in the rows, you can see here January representing 8.4 from the 100% of the grand total and February 7.65 and so on and so forth and inside each one of the values you have a percentage of the grand total meaning that bikes in January representing 6.55 of the grand total but what if I want to show the value for February bikes in February as percentage of the total 
in bikes itself meaning that i want to show how much february contributes in the sales of the bikes itself it is not a problem i can just take another copy of this pivot table Control c to copy and come here to the right Control v to paste select any cell inside the value area in the pivot table and right click again go to show value as this time as percentage of column total and you can see here i have all the grand total of the columns turned to 100 percent and here you can see for the bikes january representing 8.41 february 7.64 look at accessories as an example april representing 8.36 of the 100 percent of the total sales of the year for the accessories and so on and so forth you can also convert this to a percentage from the total row it's very easy right click show value as percent of total row and click you can see here january bikes 78 percent of the total sales of the of january uh, january components 4.11 of the 100 percent of january as well and you can see the entire column for the grand total turned to be 100 percent the grand total itself 77.98 of the 100% of the year is coming from bikes, 3.89% of the entire year coming from components and so on and so forth. But what if I want to show the value as percentage of something that I want to decide myself? That's also not a problem at all. You can just select the entire uh, pivot table, Control C to copy, Control V, and let's come here and try another one. Select any cell inside the value area right click show value as and now percentage of and this will open a dialog box asking you based on which field and based on which item for me i'm going to use the month and january and click on ok and look at this you'll find that january turned to be the 100 percent and then february is a percentage of january March percentage of January and so on and so forth not only this let me right click again show value as percentage of again and instead of selecting January I can select a percentage of previous month meaning that if I click on OK you see this time February as percentage of January and March as percentage of February and so on and so forth till the end of the table so the next option of the show value as feature is how to show the value as percent of the parent so i prepared a quick pivot table based on the same data set but now it's multi-level pivot table starting with the in the rows with the category and then the product name so i have here the total of the uh, bikes the net sales of the bikes which is 3.3 and here is the product under the bike category which is four products and the sum you can see here it is summing up to the total of the bikes and now i want to show the value as percentage of the parent i'm going to select the entire uh, pivot table Control c to copy Control v to paste and then i will select any cell inside the value area right click and show value as but this time show value as percent of parent row total and once i click you can see here the bikes now representing 77 percent or 78 percent of the grand total because the grand total is the parent for the bikes however the cargo bike representing 36.54 of the bikes and if you add up all the products under bikes it will add up to the 100 percent as shown here and so on and so forth for the rest of the categories the next one that we are going to discuss is show value as difference from so i've prepared also a small pivot table summarizing the monthly sales and let me take another copy of the net sales drop it below in the values section and let me right click and add some number formatting now i'm going to select any cell inside the new column right click show value as difference from and again it will ask you based on which field i have only month in this um, pivot table so i have no option but month and then based on which item i'm going to select this time 
January and click on OK and you can see here January now is empty in the new column and each of the month uh, showing a difference from January so February difference from January March difference from January so on and so forth let me add another one net sales down here this time I'm going to right click show value as again difference from but this time instead of February or January I'm going to select previous so each value in this column will represent the difference between this uh, month and the pre previous month so February is difference from January March difference from February and so on and so forth let me change the headers and enter not only this I can convert this also to a percentage so I can right click here and go to show value as and going to difference from and this time I'm going to use January and OK so this will convert to percentage I can do the same here right click show value as different percentage difference from and I'm going to select previous and OK so I can show it in absolute value or even in a percentage so the last one to show today is how we can show value as rank as you can see I already prepared a quick pivot table summarizing the net sales of the entire year but this time by product I have the 25 products listed here and I have a column for the net sales and I prepared another copy of the same information so we can use it to uh, insert the rank for each one of the products I'm going to select any cell in this column right click show value as and I have two options for ranking rank from smallest to largest and largest to smallest I'm going to use largest to smallest and click on OK it will ask you based on which field I have only one field here which is the product name I'm going to select and click on OK and you can see here the number one that you have here is the cargo bike and if you look uh, if you try to compare you will find this is the highest sales comparing to the other products that was all for today thank you very much for your time i hope that was helpful for you and see you next video and bye welcome to a new video from excel data analysis series pt for pivot tables video pt07 seven things that you must know about pivot tables will help you to professionally navigate through your pivot table and also it will help you to fine-tune the layout of your report and this includes how you can get a breakdown through a double click on the value area how you can filter and sort your pivot tables and also search and sort inside the field list of the pivot table and for the layout of your report how you can to fit your column width and also how you can show or hide labels and finally we'll talk about the custom styles which we spoke about before however this time we'll give more information about it if you want to follow along while watching the video or even if you want to practice after watching the video please go down in the description section you will find the link please use it to download the excel file and also use the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified with the new videos so as usual we are working on the triple a bike shop daily sales it comes in seven columns including date product name category sales and sales quantity and the net sales and i already prepared some sheets and some pivot tables so we can use it as a starting point first one we'll discuss today is the double click and you can see here in this sheet double click i have a pivot table prepared containing the quarterly sales of the triple a bike shop and summarized by category and also by product name and if i want to analyze or break down any number inside this value area let's say the road bikes in quarter four i can just select it and while selecting it just i will double click on it and see what will happen it will open a new sheet sheet one as you can see here and a new table created and this table contains the breakdown of this number if you go down here and try to add a summary you will find the same amount the 84249 exactly the same amount that i have here and it contains all the breakdowns of this number so we can analyze the number easily so the second feature i want to work on today is the filters 
it seems like an easy one however it contains a lot of details so we have to pay some attention when you create a pivot table like this it's the sales for the for the year all right sum of quantity and sum of net sales by the product name i have 25 products here in this pivot table and i have here the row label and beside the row label there's a drop down menu that i can activate or use by clicking on this arrow and it will open all the filter options the easiest part is this part it's, it contains all the items i can just unselect and select whatever i want or i can just select all and start to search here like i can do a search on bikes and when i click on ok it will have the only words containing bikes in the labels i have only three uh, items containing bikes i can clear the filter easily by either select all or i can just clear the filter from this button i can also do some uh, filtration on the value section i can do this through the same menu however this time i can go to value filter and i have a lot of options here including equals does not equal greater than less than and so on and so forth let me select less than but be careful because you have two columns containing values so you have to decide the value will be the value filter will be based on which uh, column for me i want the net sales is less than and i will write 50 thousand and okay so it will bring all the items containing value in the net sales less than 50 thousand but what if i want to add also another label filter i need to select the items uh, containing the word bike also so let me try to go in the label filter and i will go to contains it will open the uh, dialog box and show items of which la the label contains i can also change from here let me stick to contains i will write the word bike i can use also the wild cards the question mark and the asterisk for my case i'm going to use asterisk because sometimes we'll find bike written with s and sometimes without s so this will secure both uh, things with s and without s and then i'll click on ok but what will happen here i can see values bigger than 50,000 why because if you open again the filter area you will find that the value filter is cleared you can see a check mark on the label filter but value filter automatically cleared when i try to use label filter so in this case uh, the pivot table is not allowing me to do multiple filters however i can activate this feature from the pivot table analyze ribbon so while selecting any cell inside the pivot table i'm going to pivot table analyze ribbon and from the pivot table section in the options i'm going to click on options and surely i'm going to go to totals and filters and i'm going to check on allow multiple filters and okay i have now the label filter activated i can now work on the value filter and again i'm going to less than and i'm going to select net sales less than 50 thousands and okay now it's working i have filters in both uh, labels and values we are still talking about the filters but this time we are talking about multi-layer filter and this will happen only if you have more than one level inside the rows area or even inside the column area for this purpose or for this report we have two layers inside the row area we have the category and then the products and if you look at the filter options here or the filter drop down if you open it you will find a new section here called select field with a drop down asking you which field you want to work on i have the categories and i have the products but if you look at this one because it's single layer we have only one level inside the rows area if you open this you will not find this at the top as we have here in this filter um, for my uh, example here i'm going to start with categories i'm going to select accessories and then i'm going to select bikes and once i click on ok the filter applied on only these categories i can open again and this time i'm going to select the product and i'm going to search on bikes and enter so in this case i have one item from the accessories category and four products from the bikes category and i have the filter applied here if i change you can see the filter also applied here and this is the multi-layer filter we're still talking about filters but this time date filter as you can see in this pivot table we have the monthly sales and because 
this column is depends on dates we have dates in this data set but we did some grouping and we have the month and quarters to group the dates and open the dialog box for the filters i'll find something called date filter and if you hover over it you have a plenty of very good and cool uh, filters that ready made for you you can uh, just click on this and input a specific date and you have the calendar here that's very good and very easy and also you can do some other cool tricks like today that's very good and because we are in 20th of july you can see here in the calendar 20th of july so we have only one line for july but if i drop the date below you can see this is 20th of july and only 10,000. also we can use something like uh, tomorrow or yesterday you can use something like next week that's very good from 21st July, which is uh, starting tomorrow, uh, up to 27th of July, seven days. Here you can have this month, the entire July here, and you can also work with quarters. You can go here and um, decide to select this quarter, and if you take out the date, you will have the three months of this quarter, the third quarter of the year july august and september if i have more than one year in this data set i can also work with the years and also i like this one which is year to date and it's working with all the dates starting january up to today and if you also check the date here if you drop the date below the month and you go down to the last day you have here the 20th of july so this is very cool you can do a very cool and quick tricks using this filter the date filter last one for the filters is the filter area itself i have here the same report as the previous one but this time i'm going to take the category from the field list and drop it in the filters and you can see it will create another area of the report on the header um, on top of the report as something like a header and it will open a specific drop down menu you can use it to select whatever you want so if i filter on bikes the entire report will be only for bikes if i select something like accessories the entire report will be only for accessories however i can also select more than one item but before doing this i have to check this box select multiple items so i can select bikes and accessories and click on ok so in this case this report is for bikes and accessories but there is one small problem that you can see here in this label which items you selected you have to open and check exactly what items checked in this list so i prefer to do it differently i prefer to go to the field list and right click and select add as a slicer and it will create quickly a slicer and from the slicer you can see here bikes and accessories created you can clear the filter and you can see the filter area is changing with the selection of the slicer for this time i can select only bikes and by the way if i go back to the field list and from the filter area i take out the category the report will still filtered using the slicer i'm going to talk about the slicers more but not today it will be in next videos the third feature that we are going to talk about is uh, sorting and it's not that easy as you think there's a lot of details that you need to pay attention to so let's start with what we have as default sorting when you create a pivot table so the text fields when you drop it in rows or in column it, it will be sorted alphabetically in ascending order meaning that accessories starting with a's will come first and then the c will come last because i have only a b and c and i can easily reverse this if i select this drop down menu i can see the sorting option up here and i can reverse by sort from z to a and this is working very good let me undo this not only this if i drop anything in the column or in the uh, rows and this with the nature of dates it will be sorted from oldest to newest like i can see here quarter one first then quarter two and quarter three and finally quarter four and also i can reverse this by selecting the option sort newest to oldest and you can see it will start with q4 not only this 
pivot tables also allow you to do your own sort manually meaning that if i want to put accessories at the end of this report i can just select the header of the row and i can just select from the edge and drag it down till the end it will do uh, manually and perfectly also if i want to take something like q4 uh, at the beginning of the uh, columns i can just select and drag at the beginning and it is working perfectly no problem and finally you can do some sorting based on the values but make sure that you select the right option because if you are working here it's only for the rows if you are working here it's only for the columns the only two places that you can use to do sorting based on the values is right click and you go to sort or you go to the data ribbon and in sort and filter area you will have the sort options based on values in this area and now let's try it i'm going to select q1 bikes right click sort and i'm going to select sort largest to smallest and click and you can see automatically bikes jump to the first and then clothing then accessories and luckily the same order for all quarters so selecting q1 will not differ from selecting grand total or any other quarter however if in this case in this set of data if i want to uh, sort from left to right meaning that i want to put the highest quarter for sales value on the left it will depend on which row I'm selecting. Why? Because you can see in bikes Q3 is the highest. I can give a color like yellow here. And for clothing, Q4 is the highest. And that's why if I'm selecting clothing line and right click and I select it sort, more options left to right, largest to smallest. You can see this cell will jump to the left. Okay and you can see it will start with q4 however if i selected the bikes and did the same right click sort more sort options and okay the order will differ the quarter three will be at the most left and q4 will be at the end so while sorting using the value area you have to be very careful which row or which column you are selecting last one about sorting if you want excel to use a custom sorting that you already predefined and use it every time you drop the same list of fields like what i have here you want excel to start with bikes then components clothing and accessories and you want excel every time you use this set of data inside any pivot table to use it like this in this order this very easy you just highlight the four cells and you can go to file and then options and advanced and you need to scroll down up to general section here you have general section and from general edit custom list and you can see here on the left hand side all the custom list either built in in excel or you customized yourself like this ones and i want to add a new one you can go to new custom list and you type yourself here freely or because i already selected these four cells you have here in the import window it's already recognized that you want to import something from the excel sheet and you can just click on import and then okay and then okay for options and now um, the custom list already made and if you want to use it just go to the label row and from the drop down you can just use sort from a to z and you can see now the new order exactly like what you did here every time you drop this set of data inside a pivot table it will take this order feature number four it is not about pivot tables this one it's about the field list sort and search so i'm not going to work here i'm going to work here in the pivot table fields and it's all about this area how this is sorted and how can i search especially if you have a very long list of fields inside this area you can just use this efficient search box to just write the first the first letter of any field that you want to add so for instance if i want to add something like quarters or quantity i can just write q and you can see here 
quantity and quarters appeared if i want to add the product name i can just type p and you can see product name appeared here not only this you can also decide or define the way this field sorted inside this list and the default is it is sorted in the same order like the original data set and from this settings or tools wheel you can just select it and you can find here the default sort in data source order and also you can select sort from a to z if this will be uh, easier for you to select and drop and drag from the field list feature number five is auto fit column width as you can see here i have two pivot tables one summarizing the net sales by quarter and by category and the other one summarizing the quantity also by quarters and by category and uh, a lot of people are using this setup if they are working on dashboards or something like this they need to have more than one table in the same dashboard and also they can add some graphs and slices and things like this the issue will come here if you want to uh, refresh this information so let me right click in this pivot table and refresh and look at what will happen the column width will automatically adjust to fit the smaller table and you can see here you cannot read the uh, large numbers so you have to select the columns again and double click to make sure that the numbers are readable inside the pivot tables or you can go directly uh, while selecting any cell inside the pivot table to pivot table analyze and go to options uh, from layout and format auto fit column width on update if i uncheck this and click on ok and i try this time to right click and refresh the data will be refreshed and nothing will happen the column width will be preserved and will not change feature number six show and hide button and labels so in this case i have a pivot table summarizing net sales by quarter and by category and also by product and you can see here because it's multi-layer i have on the left hand side i have this button the expand and collapse button that i'm using here so if you want to send this to someone and you want him not to use this buttons so he changed layout that you use for your report that's very easy you can go in the pivot table analyze ribbon and in the show area and you can just uncheck the buttons plus and minus button and you can see the buttons disappeared from your report not only this one also you can see here in the headers something like row labels and column labels actually it's very useful for you while building the report because you can use this drop down menu and do all the filters and all the sorting however when you finally send your report or finally print your report you don't need something meaningless in the layout of your report like row labels or column labels so you can just take them out again from the same area pivot table analyze ribbon and in the show uh, area you can just uncheck the field headers and now it is disappeared and you can do now something like selecting the entire uh, area for the header and right click and go to uh, cell format and from cell format you go to alignment and horizontally you can center across selection and okay now you have a very nice and smooth format that you can use to send your final product or even to print it out so feature number seven and the last one is the custom styles and you can see this report is built on the default style that provided by excel and from the design ribbon you can find plenty of styles under pivot table styles you can just select this arrow down and you have a lot of styles that you, that you can select from however you can also do your own style customized styles from this button new pivot table style if you select this one you can start to give a name to your new style i'll call it triple a and here you can see a preview that you are going to use and also this is the name of each area in the pivot table that you need to customize yourself so i'm going to start with the whole table and i'm going to select format it will open the cell the format cell um, dialog box and i'm going to directly to fill and i'm going to select the right gray and click on ok the background of the report will be gray as seen here in the preview also i'm going to header row 
and I'm going to format this time I need something like this blue in the fill in the font I want to have it in the white color also I need it bold and also from the borders I'm going to select a right um, a light single line here and I'm going to click on OK you can see the preview changed again you have here the first strip in blue and written inside in uh, white also I'm going to something like go down down to the grand total column format fill leave it uh, no color but border let me have a small line like this one on the left and also in the font I'll do it bold and click on OK you can see the separator line here and this will be written in bold and last uh, I'm going to grand total row format I'm going to select border double line on the top and single line in the bottom and the font will be also bold and filled I'll not do anything in the fill tab so I'm going to select OK and then OK and now if you uh, check here on the top you have your custom style you can just select and here you go your own custom style created that was all for today hope that was useful for you and thank you very much for your time and see you in next videos and bye welcome to a new video from excel data analysis series pt for pivot tables video pt08 we are going to talk about presentation and visualization we are going to discuss pivot charts slicers and timelines and how we can use all of this to build an interactive dashboard this video divided into four sections first one is from a pivot table already created how you can create a pivot chart and how you can format this pivot chart secondly if you don't have pivot table how you can directly create the pivot chart how you can use it as a template so you can use it again and again third section is how you can create slicers and timelines and how you can format and organize them and the last section is how to use all the objects to create an interactive dashboard if you want to follow along while watching the video or even if you want to practice after watching the video you can go below in the description section and you will find the link you can use it to download the video also below the video you will find a timestamp you can use it to go directly to the section that you want to watch and if you subscribe yet to the channel please use the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified with each new video in the excel sheet we have today we have the daily sales of the triple a bike shop and you can see it comes in 69,000 rows as you can see here and also in 14 columns we have the dates the product name category channel segment and some other information up to the net sales so in order to start our video today I already created a table from this information and if you go to pivot chart from pivot table I already created a pivot table by segment and by category and already I filtered out the bikes as you can see here in the filters of the categories and from this pivot table we are going to create a pivot chart so to create a pivot chart from this pivot table I can go directly to insert ribbon and from the chart section I can just select pivot chart or while selecting any cell inside the pivot table I can go to pivot table analyze and go to the tools and I can select pivot chart once I, I select it will open the dialog box for insert chart and as you can see it selected automatically the column once I click on OK it will create a pivot chart as you can see it is pretty much similar to the normal chart however there's some icons and buttons on the corners and on the right of the uh, pivot chart the three buttons in the bottom of the chart is interactive buttons so I can just do some filtering here you can see here is the segment uh, field you can just select and do some filtration I can select the business segment or consumer segment if I uncheck select all and select its segment the pivot chart will be filtered only on the business segment and this will happen also 
in the pivot table and also I can use the plus and minus here as exactly I can use it here on the left of the uh, higher level of the rows section meaning that if I collapse the business section it will be collapsed here also if I collapse the consumer it will be collapsed here also if I use the plus to expand it will expand in both pivot table and pivot chart together I can use the controls in the pivot table or the controls on the pivot chart to manipulate the data and manipulate the presentation of the pivot chart now I want to do some formatting for this pivot chart and as you can see if I have all the controls here in the pivot table so I don't need to see it here in the pivot chart as well so you can easily select the pivot chart and go to pivot chart analyze and from the field buttons if you click the arrow below here you can see all the objects on the pivot chart I will select hide all and all of them will disappear as you can see here I want also to put the legend to the top so I can just select and from the green plus here I can go to legend and click on the arrow on the right and select top you can see here it will jump to the top I don't need the grid lines that I have here I can just select any one of them and delete using the keyboard also I don't want to see the labels on the axis so I can select the axis and right click axis format it will open the format pane on the right hand side here I can go to labels and from labels I'll see the label position next to axis I can just select and select none it will disappear from the chart now I want to add the data labels on the top of the columns for the net sales so I can go again to the green plus and go to data labels and just click it will appear on the top here I can select and use the control B to uh, make it bold I can also select the horizontal axis labels and control B so it will appear uh, much nicer I can select the uh, net sales series as you can see here and I can go to format data series on the right hand side here and I can go to the fill and I can select something like solid fill and a color similar to what I have here in the pivot chart so I'll select it from the drop down here I can select this color the light blue and also I can change the color of this label to have it something like dark blue to match what I have here in the color of the quantity series I can go to home and here from the um, font coloring I can just give it something like dark blue now suppose that I don't have a pivot table to, to start with and I want to create directly a pivot chart this is not a problem at all I can go to the original data select any cell inside the table that I called daily sales and I can go directly to insert and from the chart area or chart section I can go directly to pivot chart it will automatically detect your table and will ask you where you want to put your pivot table and pivot chart I'm going to select existing worksheet and I can go directly to pivot chart directly sheet and will select something like a7 and click on ok it will create two objects together a pivot table and a pivot chart let me give a name to this pivot table and from the pivot table analyze while selecting any cell inside the pivot table area I can go to the left and give a name like commission and average price and enter I can also give a name to the pivot uh, chart I can select the object itself and from pivot table chart analyze I can come here to chart name and give it a name and I can start to build my report and my chart together so if I select the pivot table itself you can see here your pivot table fields and you can start to build your pivot table I will start with the categories in the axis it will put it here and also the pivot table start to take the shape exactly like the pivot chart let's take the segments on top of category like what we have earlier let me filter out the bikes as I did in the other pivot table and also let's take this time the commission value drop it in the value you can see here the pivot chart already drawn and you have the values here 
like a bar chart and you have also here your values also i want to add to this report the average price i will scroll down to average price drop it in the values as well i have to also do some formatting like what i did last time i want to use the same changes i did in the previous chart so i can go back to the previous chart and select it right click and save as template it will open a dialog box and will ask you what name you want to give to this template the default is chart one i'm going to give a name like pt08 the name of this video and save now i can go again to the new chart select it go to design tab and from design change a uh, chart type i can also do it from the right click change chart type this time i'm going to select templates and you have the new templates that you already saved here double click it will do all the changes like what you did last time however you can see here the bar for the prices is too small so in this case you you need to adjust the template that you already used this is very easy while selecting the chart you can go to change chart type and instead of selecting columns you can select combo and this time i'm going to use clustered column which is this blue columns and a line as you can see line like this and i'm going to use secondary axis so the relation between the line and the bar charts will be very good i'm going to select okay you can do some manual adjustments to the label so the overlapping you can just solve the overlapping manually like what i'm doing here just uh, select the label and move it little bit so the overlapping will not create a problem and also i have here the labels that i want to get rid of like what we did last time i'm going to select the axis right click format axis and again you can go to labels and none but now i want to add some new filter to the report like something like the region so i can just directly take the region from the pivot table field and drop it in the filter area now if i'm trying to filter the report something like alex you can see both the pivot table and the pivot chart will be filtered to only alex but i want to do this with visual so i'm going to undo what i did and here the slicer will come to the picture while selecting any cell inside the pivot table i can go to pivot table analyze and go to insert a slicer it will open a dialog box and ask you which field exactly you want to add a slicer for however it's much easier if i go to the pivot table fields or from the pivot chart i go to the pivot chart fields and i go directly to region right click and add as a slicer it will automatically create a slicer if i select from the header i can reposition to the right of the chart and you can see here i can change my selection and the selection will be impacting both the pivot table and the pivot chart i can clear the filter from here and lot of other formatting and cosmetics we are going to do on these slicers in a while now what if i want also to uh, filter my data across the time meaning that i want to look at the different days different months different quarters and different years while selecting any cell inside the pivot table i can go to pivot table analyze and go to the filter area and select insert timeline and the only option you can do or you can use is the date so i'm going to select this or i can cancel and go directly to the date field from the pivot table fields and right click and add as timeline it will create this nice object and i can just from the header select and drag to reposition below the pivot chart i can also use these buttons or these dots to resize uh, to the area that i want the default is to filter the information by um, month as you can see here here is the time level so the default is month but i can use years quarters and days if i select something like january the two object the pivot table and the pivot chart will be filtered to january february march i can use also this edge and drag it until do multiple selections 
so you can see here in the uh, selection label you can see q1 because i selected jan feb and march together if i expand to june it will write q1 to q2 2016 and so on and so forth if i change the level to quarters i can see here the two quarters selected i can just increase my selection and so on and so forth if you change the time level to uh, years you can see you have 2016 can just select and 2017 which is empty so if i want to bring the data inside 2017 it's very easy because i work i start my work by creating the pivot table based on this table the daily sales table it's only for 2016 i can just go to this data for uh, 2017 and uh, selecting the second line the f or the first line just after the headers i will use the keyboard shortcut Control and shift arrow down to select till the end right arrow to select to the end of the columns Control C to copy go back to actual 2016 I'm going to select the first empty cell on the left hand side after the table Control V to paste and you will see the range of the table will be expanded automatically and because I based my pivot table based on this table my data will be updated automatically all i want to do is just uh, alt f5 the keyboard shortcut to refresh the pivot table and you will see here the information for 2017 is already inside the pivot table so there is some also some other options or some other settings you can do for the timeline if you select from the header here you will find the timeline ribbon you can just uncheck the scroll bar you can see the scroll bar disappeared you can also uncheck the header its date so no need to say its date so i just uncheck the header you can also uh, hide the selection label which is uh, written here but i like to have it also you can unhide the time level but for me i'm going to leave it now we have a pivot table pivot chart and we have two controls one a slicer is just to filter by region and the other one is the timeline to change our selection or our filtration across the time the last section of this video is how to bring all those objects that we created together to form an interactive dashboard i already created the title of the dashboard which i called triple a bikes net sales and commission i will go directly to the first pivot table the net sales and quantity i will select the entire table Control x to cut go to the dashboard and i'm going to leave one line space between the header and my pivot table and Control v to paste i'm going to bring also the second pivot table i'm going to select the entire pivot table for commission and average price Control x to cut i'm going to the dashboard i'm going to leave one empty space or one empty line after the separation line here and Control v to paste now let's bring the charts i'm going to the first chart quantity and net sales Control x to cut going to dashboard next to the pivot table Control v let me bring the other chart i will select Control x go to the dashboard Control v to paste now i want to bring my controls inside the dashboard the first one which is the slicer select Control x coming back to the dashboard i want to place it here Control v again i want to resize as you can see it's not easy to make it aligned with the grid lines so there is a very nice option while selecting the slicer i go to the slicer ribbon and from the align options i will find something called snap to grid once i select this if i want to move or, or resize the object will be aligned 100 percent to the grid you can see here if it will take steps with the grids i want it only on the m so i'm going to resize to m also i can just resize from the bottom here so it will take the entire uh, area in the right hand side you can see here the header is not uh, written properly because uh, i don't use uh, a lot of space so i can just select and from the slicer i can go to slicer settings it will open this dialog box i can uncheck 
display header and OK. You can also increase the height of the buttons from the slicer ribbon also can go to buttons and from the height of the buttons you can increase I will increase up to 5 5 and enter let's try my control now if I selected Alex only this table and this pivot chart will change and this is not good at all I want also this pivot table and pivot chart to change whilst filtering or selecting from the slicer so this is easy I can just select the header going to slicer and this time I'm going to report connection I'll find it's only um, working with the commission av and average price I want it also to work with the net sales I will just select and OK now the four objects the two pivot tables and the two pivot chart will work with the slicer if I want to remove the filter just right click and clear filter from region but look what happening it is just resizing every time because of the pivot table I want to just um, uh, do some settings so the pivot table size will not change with my selection I can just select any cell inside the pivot table go to pivot table analyze and from options just uncheck the auto fit column width on update and OK let me do same in the other pivot table you can see also some fine tunings need to be done with the pivot table I can see the filter here and the buttons here I want to get rid of this while selecting any cell inside the pivot table pivot table analyze you can just uncheck uh, plus and minus buttons you can uncheck field headers you can see here is much better I can do the same for the other pivot table the last object we need to bring is the timeline I'm going to just select and control X come to the dashboard just next to the title control V use your mouse to resize also resize down and also you want to change the timeline connection I'm going to take the timeline and from timeline ribbon similar to what we did in the slicer report connection I will check on the net sales now everything is working together I can use these two controls with the entire dashboard uh, also to have the final look and feel uh, much better than this you can just go to view and from view you can uncheck the grid lines uncheck the headings uncheck the formula bar and collapse the menus and here you go very nice and interactive dashboard you can filter according to region using the slicer you can filter according to the time using the time line thank you very much for your time hope that was useful for you and see you in the next videos and Welcome to a new video from Excel Data Analysis Series PT for Pivot Tables. Video PT09, we are going to talk about pivot tables that are based on Power Query. In this video, we are going to see how we can work with 3 million plus records in Excel. So, we'll not be limited to the million record in the normal Excel sheet. And also we are going to see how we can load those record from CSV file directly to Power Query. Then from this Power Query, we are going to load the data into a pivot table and create a sales report. And finally, using the Power Query, even after creating the report, we are going to categorize our data using lookup tables. And then we are going to update all changes directly and automatically to the pivot table. Before jumping into Excel to start our exercise today, let's have a look at the CSV file that we are going to load to the Power Query. As you can see here in this folder, we have the sales 2016-2018. It contains 3 million records. And if you look at the size of the file, it's 126 megabytes. I already opened the CSV file in a notepad and you can see here in the counter of the lines we have 3,145,000 lines meaning that we are going to push more than 3 million records inside Excel. So let's start our exercise and we are going to use an empty Excel sheet 
Why? Because we are going to load the data from an external source using Power Query. In Office 365, you will find Power Query in the data ribbon. On the left hand side, you will find a section called Get and Transform. And to load from a CSV file, there are shortcut we can find here from text or CSV. Or we can go to Get Data and select the small arrow down here. And then From File from text or csv it will open the browser in order to ask you where you stored your file in this folder i have only one csv file i'm going to select and then i'm going to select import it will open a navigation window from the navigation window you can preview a sample of your data and we have three options that we can use here first one is cancel i will not use this at the moment and then we have load and I will not use this as well because always I want to transform data and once I click on transform data it will open the Power Query Editor. Now I have the Power Query Editor launched and before continue working let's have a quick overview on the Power Query Editor. On the right hand side you will see the query settings. The upper part of it is the name of the query and it is inherited from the name of the file. I can edit or I can change. And then in the below side, you'll see the applied steps. From here, you can automate your work. You can uh, go back and undo any step that you don't want. And you can edit any step of those steps. And you can see the Excel already created automatically three steps, which is source, which is just getting the data from the source and then promote header and then change type which is just trying to get the right uh, data type for each column like what we can see here sales uh, rep id is one to three meaning that it is numbers and something like the dates you can see the calendar icon here meaning that uh, excel detected its dates the discount percent you can see excel detect it is percentage so the three steps here is uh, automatically uh, produced and I can go back and edit or even using this red cross I can just delete on the left hand side if you expand here you can see a list of all your queries for the time being we have only one query so we have only one item in this section and in the above uh, section of the uh, query editor you, you will see four menus first one is home then transform add column and view we are not going to talk about each one of them for the moment however we are going to use some options later and we'll talk about those options while working on them and finally in the middle you can see your data a preview of your data however the rest of the data is stored in the csv file and it was mentioned that this data is not the real data it's just a connection to the data meaning that any change we are going to do here will not impact or affect the CSV file, the original data. It's just a read-only version of the data. We can do all the changes, all the steps without any impact on the original data. I will not do any changes to the data for the moment. Uh, the three steps done already by Excel is enough for me. And now my data is ready to load to the Excel. So from home ribbon, there is a button on the left hand side called close and load. If I use this button directly, it will load the data to an Excel table. However, we I have here more than 3 million records. So the Excel table will not be enough to absorb all the data. So what I can do is from the same button, I can use the small arrow down here. And instead of selecting close and load, I'm going to select close and load two. Once I press on this, it will open a small dialog box asking you where exactly you want to load your data. In the import data dialog box, you select pivot table and then click on OK. Once I click on OK, two things will happen. A new window will open called queries and connection. And this will tell you that you have a new query and you can see the rows of the CSV file is now counting. It will continue count up to the three million record and then a pivot table will be created now the three million records loaded and the pivot table is created and first step i'm going to give a name and let's start to build our report i'll start by dropping the date in the rows so automatically the dates will be grouped together now i have in the rows years quarters and date which is the month i don't need the quarters i'll take it out and let me put the years in the columns and let's start to put 
some values I'll take the sold quantity so I'm going to select quantity and drop it in the value right click and quick number formatting can you believe this three million records summarized inside Excel in a small pivot table a monthly report by year let's do another report I will select the entire pivot table control C to copy going down control V to paste I have a new pivot table as well that's very easy I can take out the dates and let's try to take something like the product name I have here only the product ID let's try it I'll drop it in the rows oh as you can see here I have all the products the 25 products however it is with codes I don't have the names if you go to the other sheet the lookup tables I have here a lookup table to categorize our data by the product name and also by category I have the product ID the product name and the category so I can use this information to categorize this however I'm going to use also the power query to do this categorization so before doing this I need to convert this uh, set of data into an Excel table so while selecting any cell inside the data set I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control T it will open this small dialog box click on OK and then I'm going to give a name from the table design ribbon on the left hand side let's call it product categories and while selecting any cell inside the table I'm going to data ribbon and again from the get and transform section I can use this one to directly send this data into the power query editor the power query editor launched again and you can see in the query settings the name of the table inherited here I have the same name of the table and I have also two applied steps one is the source and the other one is the changing of the types as you can see it detects that product ID is numbers however product and category is text and if I expand the pane on the left hand side you will find that I have now two queries so what I want to do now is I want to use that this categories and put it inside the actual table here or the fact table and I want to use the product ID as a matching key between the two tables so what I will do now is while selecting the sales 2016 2018 I'm going to home ribbon and from home ribbon I'm going to combine section and from combine section I'm going to use merge queries once I click on merge queries it will open a dialog box divided into two section in the upper section I will see the active query sales 2016 and 2018 and in the downside of the dialog box will ask you which query you want to merge with I have only two queries so I'm going to merge this one with the other one I'm going to use the drop down I'm going to use product categories and you can see here a preview of the data for the two tables now available and as agreed I want to use the product ID as a matching key between the two tables so I'm going to select it from the uh, sales 2016-2018 and also I'm going to select it from uh, product categories and you can see it will have like something like this green color and if you look down here it's writing estimating matches based on data previews meaning that now power query is looking into this id and trying to find a match in this table for each product id it is pretty much similar to what we have in the vlookup function in excel once it finish i can just click on ok and look what will happen a new column will be added called product categories and in the right hand side a new applied step called merged queries but this is not exactly what I want I want the data from this table uh, if I click on any cell just on the right not on the table itself in the empty area here on the right you can see here the entire match came from the other table meaning that for the second line that I have it gets the complete record from the other table uh, product ID 2018 gloves and clothing if you check another one like the third line it will find the same the product ID is 2016 so it matches the record that we have here 2016 caps and clothing and so on and so forth but this is not exactly what I want I want this data just the product and the category to be listed here beside each and every uh, product ID this is not a problem at all using these two uh, arrows on the header of the column I'm going to just select 
and don't forget to uncheck use original column name as prefix I need only the category and the product so I'm going to uncheck the product ID and click on OK two columns will be created with the data that I want now my query is ready I'm going to use the same button close and load to it will open the same dialog box but this time this table I don't want to use I want to just leave it in the background so I'm going to select only create a connection meaning that this table will not be loaded anywhere it will just remain in the background so I'm going to select OK it took some time but now the 3 million records already loaded I can go back to the sheet containing the pivot table and if I check the pivot table I can find now two new fields one called category and the other called product and now I want to use the product name and the category so I'm going to select the product ID and just remove it from the rows then I'm going to take the category drop it in the rows and you can see now I have the report summarized by the categories I can take the product ID and drop it below the categories then I will have my report completed by category and then by product now I have two reports one monthly and yearly report the other one yearly by category and you can see I managed to work with 3 million records inside the power query very easy and very quick that was all for today hope that was useful for you thank you very much for your time and see you in next videos and bye Welcome to the last video from Excel Data Analysis Series PT for Pivot Tables. Video PT 10, Pivot Tables and Power Pivot. In this video, we are going to see how we can create relations between tables and how we can build a pivot table report based on more than one table. And also we are going to use a simple DAX formula to create a measure inside the data model. And finally, how we can attach number formatting to this created measure in our life example today we have two data sets the one on the left hand side is the daily sales transactions it comes in four columns the date and the sales rep id and also the sales amount and finally the commission percentage on the right hand side we have another data set containing the sales rep id as well and the name the full name first and last name of the sales representatives and what is required is to calculate the commission we have here the sales amount and the commission percentage so we can calculate the commission and finally to analyze the, the whole report uh, commission and sales by the sales rep name not only this we are going to do all of this using the pivot tables and building on the capability of the data model in excel so before start working i need to convert these two data sets into uh, excel tables so while selecting any cell inside the first data set i'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control t it will open this small dialog box it will recognize automatically the data set and also ask you if you have headers in your data set and my answer is okay and then i have to give a meaningful name to this table i'll call it sales t for sales transaction and enter i'll do the same in the other table control t okay and let me give a name like sales rep now um, i have the two data sets converted to tables first thing i want to do is to create a relation between these two tables so i can go directly to data ribbon from the menus upside here and i can go to the data tools section and i'm going to select this small icon and if you hover on it you'll read relationships i will click on this it will open this dialog box i will select new it will open this uh, small dialog box asking you what tables and what columns you need to create relation between for our case we have two tables so i'm going to select the first one the sales uh, t 
and for sure I want to select which column that I'm going to use to create this relation I'm going to select from the drop down menu here the sales rep ID I'll do the same in the second table the related table I'm going to use the other table sales rep and the related column will be automatically also the sales rep ID now I am ready I can just click on OK now you can close this dialog box and we are ready to create our pivot table so while selecting this empty space in F19 I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt and V it will open the create pivot table dialog box but I'm not selecting any data sets however because there is a data model created behind the scene uh, this happened once we created a relation between more than one table you can see here the Excel automatically selected use this workbooks data model and also it senses that I want to create this pivot table in the existing worksheet in location sales F19 I'm going to click on OK the pivot table will be created and if you look at the pivot table fields list you will see now two tables so this pivot table is created based on two tables if you click the arrow here you will see the field of the sales rep uh, table it's the four fields and also you have the four columns for the other table I can just drag and, and drop from this uh, fields to create my report I'm going to select the sales rep name and also from the T sales or sales T I'm going to select the sales and you can see I managed to create a sales report by sales rep based on these two tables now I want to calculate the commission and you can see here I have the sales amount and also I have the commission percentage but I want to calculate the commission inside the pivot table and here the measures the creation of measures will come to the picture so I can go directly to the pivot table fields and I can select the uh, T sales or sales T table and then right click and click on add measure it will open a dialog box it will ask you which table you want to add this measure to I have only two choices sales rep and sales T I will stick to sales T I have to give a name to the measure so I'll call it commission and I can give a description or not I'll select not to give a description and here I can write my formula uh, creating measures will not be working with the normal Excel formula it will work with the DAX formulas and DAX is stands for data analytics expressions and in our case we are going to use a simple DAX formula called sum X so after the equal here I'm going to write the name of the formula sum and X and like Excel there is an assistance I can just click on tab it will help you to uh, write the parameters of the formula you can see it needs a name of the table and because we are working inside the sales table I'm going to uh, give the sales T as the name of the table and while writing you can see the assistance is giving you all the options I have the sales rep and the sales T I will select sales T and click on tap and then comma then I want to do my expression or my calculation in this case it will be just multiplication of the sales commission percentage time the sales so um, the sales commission percentage inside the sales table so I'm going to start with writing again sales T it will give you all the option all the fields that you can use inside this table for my case I want to use the commission percentage times and then again sales T I need to multiply this by the sales select and tap and then close the brackets then there is a very nice option here check DAX formula if you check it it will give you if you have an error or not in our case it gave you the green um, tick mark meaning that you have no errors now I can click OK and the measure will be created but before doing this if you look at this area you can give number formatting to be attached to this um, formula or to this measure so I'm going to select currency and zero decimal places and OK and look what will happen here if you go down uh, from the 
pivot table fields if you go down in the sales t table you will find a new field created called commissions and before the name of the field you will find fx meaning that this is a measure or calculated field let me select and drop in the values box and you can see here i managed to calculate the commission inside the pivot table and also i managed to use the information coming from two tables to create one report and uh, finally i want you to see if we create another pivot table we just need to select any empty cell and again the alt nv shortcut it will open this i need also to create a new pivot table based on the data model and again in the existing worksheet click on ok this time you can see you have your measure still here i can just drop it in the values and i can take something like the dates and drop it in the rows let me right click and group now you have a monthly uh, report as you can see and the formatting of the field still working the formatting that you attach to your measure still working and you can create hundreds of pivot tables and you can use the measure inside each of those tables unlike the normal calculated fields and items that is normally attached to one uh, pivot table so that was all for today and also all for the pt for data analysis series thank you very much and hope that was useful for you and wait for me in the next series it will be talking about power query take care and bye